Hey guys, BD Cool 213 here, and welcome back to my paper trail walkthrough for Infamous Second Son. So now let's go ahead and get started with part 3 over here. And I bet we're gonna chase her. Yep, there we go. Gotta start off a new part with chasing her. There she goes. <laughs> there she goes. Where is she now? Oh, messed up. Try to jump at the end there. Are we there yet? Oh, I guess we are. Now oh, looks like I'm gonna have to fight those guys. That's funny how the cops are right there, and we got some thugs with what saw rifles. <laughs> They're not even doing anything about it. Oh crap! That's far enough. This area's off limits. What you need? I. Maybe, I guess I don't have to fight him. Or maybe I do. <laughs> oh crap, now the cops are shooting at me. Oh great. Well, I guess we get a little bit of action at least. Oh my god, really? Oh, what a... Didn't mean to kill him. God, there's some more? Jeez. Well, it sucks I don't get any good karma from that. Okay, where can we photograph? There we go. Tire. All right. What have we here? So we got a poster and a and a dove. Okay, this was cute at first. It's time for my third part. Let's go ahead and uh, check the website now. Alright, so we got quite a bit to look at here, so let's get started. Let's check out the crime scene photos that we just took. Alright, and then we have the origami dove. Okay, and as you guys can see there, right at the end, we have another file access number. So, once again, we're going to go back into the uh, internet page of the Department of Unified Protection. And we're going to put that number in there. But yeah, this is going to take us to cell 404. And um, 
We got another puzzle to solve here, so let's let's check out everything we got here first. So yeah, wherever you see one of those little arrow things, it'll give you information of what it is. And let's I think there was an origami here. Oh no, I guess not. Oh here we go. Here's one origami. And then we got a little uh little pattern drawn on the origami there. So if you look on the wall in the background, it actually matches up with this. And then there's numbers in, in a specific order here. And we have to write down the number that's first. So the first number would be zero. Second one would be number two, that's forty-four. Three would be sixty-five. Four would be eighty-six. Five would be one oh five. Six would be five, which should have written down here. Yeah, here we go. So it's this one here. So show you guys that. See where it takes us. Oh, okay. So <laughs> that's right. So it takes us to a little, uh, I guess, how to make an origami dove. And then if we click on origami template, it's got one for us to make. So I had a little problem with that. My printer doesn't have any ink, so what I ended up doing was I opened up this program called uh, GIMP, which is an image editing program. I took a screenshot of that, and then what I did was I cut the, the numbers off of the picture, then I put them all together, and I got 93, 58, 824, 74, 59. So let's go ahead and go ahead and show you guys what happens when we put that number in. So let's close this. Or I closed the wrong one, didn't I? Yeah, no matter. Or actually, it was how to make your own origami. But uh, yeah, it took us to a page with an audio file, so I'll let you guys listen to that here. Caged before I could ever fly free. Soon, I will leave this prison forever. It's not enough. The small sips of normalcy. A few precious glimpses of a life I have never been allowed to live. Moments caught in panels. Everything else lost to the gutters. And now they want to ship me to a government detainment center. A new cage for me to rot in. To never use my powers again. No. For once in my life... I choose what happens next. Every day, just a single scrap of paper. A sliver here, a scrap there. A little every day for seven years, secreted away, has become a flock. Strange to think these paper doves, once merely salvation for my spirit, will now truly set me free. Everything is so much simpler when I use my power. Tonight, I use it to leave this life forever. All right, and then after that, uh, let's see, we're going to go back here. And then if you click on that, it gives you just a little description of the number webs. And we have another side we can look at here in the cell. We have some suppression cuffs. And then another part we can look at. And there's another origami dove. So let's check it out. And here we have another one of these. So, uh, so yeah, you match it with that in the background. So I believe the number I got was... Let me make sure it's... Okay, so it should be... Should be three eight seven seven one two six nine three four one. So let's go ahead and put that number down here. And now we have an incident report. So here we have a few numbers. Uh, this one, I believe, that's yeah, that's Celia's um, profile or uh, report. So we already we already took a look at that at a previous video. But I copied this one down because this is a new one. And I'll let you guys take a look at this here. Alright, so let's go ahead and 
take a look at that file access number 007-3171-8404. Uh, it's not letting me copy. What's going on here? <laughs> okay, this is weird. Now nah, let me just write it down or type it down. 007-3171-8404. And now we have a document of Henry da Daughtry, which uh, I believe that's, yeah, that's the guy that we, uh, the Delson absorb smoke from the beginning of the game so there's this doc and it's got another page down below here there's one more at the bottom and then there's another FAN uh, number there so we take that number hopefully it'll copy this time there we go now we have a bioterrorist recon I can't even pronounce that. <laughs> reconnaissance, I think. So let's see here. So there's Henry's uh fan number. Take a look down here. I think there's a little picture. A DUP surveillance camera. And then there's an ID number there. So wrote that down here. That's it. Alright, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to Nelson's phone over here. And we're going to type that number in here. So 9109636363361543361413. Submit. And we just got a signal, so basically I think it's going to, I believe it's going to take us to that location where that picture was taken from the surveillance camera. And, um, let's see. Okay. Oh yeah, and there was also another thing as well. Um, oh, I forgot to show you guys this. The Weingart, Weingard or Wingard campaign poster. This is another one of the uh, things that we got from the crime scene. And this website does exist, so I'll take you guys there here. Uh, oh, that saved it. Let's see, Winger, Winger for state, Senate, for Senate. Winger for Senate. All right, and we got a little video here, so I'll let you guys watch that. Hello, my name is Jeffrey Winger. I've had the honor of representing you in the United States Senate for the past 11 years. And during that time, I've stood for honesty, integrity, and an end to bioterrorism. As you know, most bioterrorists are safely detained at Curtin K, but that doesn't mean that the threat has been eradicated. Due no doubt to my tough stance on bioterrorism, I have become the personal target of one of these dangerous individuals. First in a parking lot in Georgetown, and then again when I went to inspect the devastation caused by the bioterrorist fetch at the Crocodile Club. This cowardly, would-be assassin blew up my car. Both times, I narrowly escaped with my life. But freedom can't be killed, and I have redoubled my effort to make sure these bioterrorists are locked up and unable to harm innocent people. That's why I'm calling on all citizens, not just to vote for Winger, but to let their congressmen know that they support my anti-bioterrorist legislation. Together, we will snuff out the bioterror menace wherever it may fester. Why should we be the ones living in fear? It's their turn to be scared. Thank you. Paid for by Citizens for Wingard. Okay, and that's pretty much it. And then there's a picture of one of his cars. But, um, yeah, not a whole lot to this website. Uh, there's a few more pages, I guess, talking about him. And the mission. And, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. So no no numbers or anything that we need there. 
But uh, all right, that takes care of that. So let's go ahead and go back into the game now. All right, let's take a look here. We should be able to move on. Investigate the assassination attempt on Senator Winger. Find the ones responsible. All right, here we go. Now we got to find that camera. Get this guy out here. Gonna need some neon, just in case. This is a big area. Oh man, this is a really big area. So this is a bar sign and a parking sign as well. Ugh. Wait. Wait a minute, there's a parking sign here, but. It's not the one that's on the camera. No. Oh, there it is. Yep, it looks... I don't see myself, though. Hold on, let me make sure. Oh, there we go. I think I saw it. There it is. Might answer a few questions. Ah, uh, let me fight these guys. Get some more karma. Time to send that data drive to the good old website. And let's go ahead and check it out. Alright, let's take a look here on what I had to do. So, uh, there's this mini game that I had to play in order to defrag the camera's drive because I guess it was unreadable. Uh, basically, what it involves is a bunch of nodes. Basically, you have to get the nodes from one end to the other. Uh, the nodes have different colors there's uh, blue, orange, uh, yellow and pink and sometimes the nodes will be all you know all one color sometimes they'll be two two colors or three and what you do is you put the notes together by combining the colors and there's also a cl uh, like a gray or clear no it's I guess it's gray uh, a gray node that'll mix with any of the colors so uh, and you have to do you have to solve these little puzzles seven of them there's seven at least to fully defrag the drive um, and then once you do that once you do all seven and you get this uh, success HDD defragmentation complete loading data files and you get a video file and a software patch so let's take a look at the video file here and I'll play this for you guys
All right, that's that. And then let's take a look at the software patch. So we got some release notes regarding a software update. But if you guys notice, there's a website listed near the bottom there. Department of United or Department of Unified Protection dot com slash vehicle tracker. So let's go ahead and take a look at that website. And another thing, if you guys notice at the end of the video, uh, they they zoomed in on a license plate. So we're going to take that license plate number, put it in the vehicle tracker website, and boom, there it is. And that was pretty much it. Uh, yep, there was nothing else, so uh, let's go ahead and head back into the game now. Alright, let's continue here. Alright. Let's go meet up with the Senator. Uh, once I start the mission. <laughs> there we go. There's a lot of neon here. Yeah, let me get some of that. I guess I got to go up there. Oh, what the hell? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I wonder what would happen if we'd kill him. Alright, well, I'm a good guy, so I'm gonna heal him. See? We're not all monsters. Spread the word. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if maybe keepers. maybe it would change if I would have killed them. Like, if everything after this would have been Got different. One. I, would, I would have ended up killing the senator. Huh. That's pretty interesting. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at the evidence that we just collected. So let's look at, let's look at the origami dove first. And of course, we got a little note at the end. It says, "Faking your, faking your own death. Pathetic. Here's the upside: your career is dead." And there's more right there. All right, now let's take a look at uh, Wingard's campaign poster number two. Yeah, notice it says WingardLies.com. Actually, I thought it was a joke, but well, it turns out that that actually is a website as well. WingardLies.com. We'll take a look at that in a second. I'll let you guys read that. And let's take a look. Winger lies and a bunch of stuff there. If you guys want to read it, you can go ahead and pause it. And let's go ahead and I'll let you. I'll let, I'll scroll down so you guys can read all this, and I'll play the audio file as well. So what exactly can I do for you, Mr. Petrovich? Please call me Jonas. I'd rather not. I'm familiar with your lobbying efforts. I'm not sure I want to be on a first-name basis with you. Fair enough. But you and I have a common goal. And what's that? It's to demonize the conduits until the general public sees them as a bioterrorist threat. And how is that beneficial to either of us? Because fear breeds action. I stand to profit from it, and you could get reelected. Keep talking. Let's say a bioterrorist tried to attack you. That's why I have security. I'm speaking in hypotheticals here. Let's say your constituents were so upset about the failed assassination attempt that they rallied to your cause and flooded the voting booths, sending you back to Washington by a landslide. Hmm. I never thought about playing the victim. Are you sure it won't make me look weak? You? Weak? Impossible. Surviving an assassination attempt makes you a hero. So, what exactly are you suggesting? Well, I don't want to tell you how to do your job. But maybe you should resurrect your anti-conduit legislation. But that went nowhere fast. I'll help you rewrite it. For starters, they're bioterrorists, not conduits. 
Strong language from a strong legislator. That'll fire up your base. Base firing up, that's always good. And what about the bogus assassination story? You just play along. I know plenty of people in the media. Leave it to us. Sounds like a solid plan. It's great doing business with you, Jonas. Pleasure. That's pretty interesting. Maybe we should have killed the senator. Nah, doesn't matter. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Well, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed part three of my paper trail walkthrough. And stay tuned for part four.